Hi, my name is Mahathi Rajala. I uh, live in New Jersey, so I'm getting my PhD in epidemiology, and I'm actually studying now um, vaping and risk factors for gastric cancer. I want to somehow merge my professional interests and background with my personal interests and experience and try to be a researcher who can also provide this patient advocacy aspect of it, because I think so many times in research, we're not listening to the patients. We're just doing research. We kind of see patients as subjects and that's not okay. Since I started the PhD program in 2018, I was complaining with, of a lot of acid reflux and gastritis. I didn't know what I could eat anymore or what I couldn't eat because everything was making me sick. I went to many different physicians and not a single one of them tested me for H. pylori, which is a known carcinogen for gastric cancer. Um, I was born in India and I lived there for eight years before moving to the United States. So I was exposed to it. I tested positive for H. pylori. I took the medicines for it. Then in December, I had an endoscopy where they found the ulcer and it was pretty, it was a pretty gory ulcer. So I went back in February for my follow-up endoscopy, and that's when they found that underneath the ulcer the whole time was a mass. It was a tumor, and it was a pretty aggressive um, type of signet ring cell adenocarcinoma. They thought it was early stages, so they were like, let's just get the surgery done. That's the best way to get clean margins and be declared NED. And then after that, if needed, you can do chemotherapy. <clears throat> I had my subtotal gastrectomy on March 7th, 2022. Technically, I was declared NED as of that day when he removed everything. They biopsied the tumor and found that it did spread to those two lymph nodes that lit up in the original CT scan. With that, they had recommended that I do chemotherapy for six months to make sure it didn't spread anywhere else in my body. We had also visited our, a fertility specialist. We had four weeks to figure out what we're doing. In that time period of four weeks, I got COVID. <laughs> then I had to schedule my fertility appointments to harvest my embryos, um, go through that entire process. But I think for me, it was the most exhilarating experience. It was something that had hope for us for the future. It was something that we can look forward to. I had completed my embryo harvesting on like a Tuesday or Monday. And then that Friday I'd gotten my port placed and the next Monday I started chemo. I had just gotten my port placed the Friday before and I started chemo the Monday after and my port was still healing but there was pus coming out of my port and blood coming out of my port i had to see an infectious disease specialist to see what was going on with my port it was just like the port caused a lot of problems for me and made me really uncomfortable for that first month of chemo i had it in for a month about a month uh the port until uh, until they figured out that it was actually getting infected and we need to get it removed before I have sepsis. So I had a pick place and then I kept the pick in from for the rest of my chemotherapy time. Then I had to adjust to the pick and learning how to take care of my pick. I definitely was not about to let that get infected again. I, I knew the first infection was not in my hands, but I was gonna do whatever I could to make sure the pick was not getting infected. Six months of chemo was difficult to say the least. Um, chemo's hard. Chemo's just, it's poison that you're putting through your body willingly and it's killing every cell in your body that it can possibly get to. And it felt like that. I felt like a zombie. I felt like death. So after chemo, it was a very difficult period for me mentally, not physically. Physically, I was learning to eat better and I was learning to figure out what to eat and what I couldn't eat but mentally it was a really really difficult period and I think any cancer survivor will tell you the same thing that it's very isolating it's very lonely no one would understand what it's like um not even my partner not even my husband he, no one would know what it's like unless you're the person who has gone through chemotherapy and cancer and you're the one who's now no longer going through it so I went back in to talk to my oncologist and I was like, 
I'm really scared. And I brought up early on that I wanted to do immunotherapy. So we brought that back onto the table and um, we did a lot of like risk assessment to see if immunotherapy was the right fit for me. Here are the pros of getting onto immunotherapy where it could work. We will never know if it's gonna work or not, but it could work. And here are the cons of it. You can have a lot of other side effects from immunotherapy. It's rare, but there are a list of side effects that you can have. And I said, I wanna do it. I need some sort of, I need to know that we're doing something to fight this. Even if it might not work. Like I, I need to know that I've tried every single possible thing that I possibly could have to make sure that this cancer is not coming back. For myself, I just want to have more years to live. I'm really afraid of this cancer. Um, I'm really afraid of the cancer coming back. So my hope is that I have more and more years to live. I hope I can have kids. Um, I also hope to finish my PhD. Um, I know that you know thinking about my life in this grand scheme of things is something that I have that the cancer has robbed me of. So my hope is to get through next this this year and next year and to graduate next year with my PhD. And my hope is, you know, then to start thinking about maybe getting pregnant if I'm allowed to at that time. And my hope is getting to two years and then three years and five years. And my hope for stomach cancer is that we start screening earlier in the United States, especially a lot of young adults. By the time they're diagnosed with it, it's stage four and they're dying from it. We do not have enough studies with younger adults in these studies where we're studying why they're getting cancer or what their side effects are like, what their quality of life is like after they're diagnosed. When I asked about fertility, not enough data. If we're not able to get rid of this disease, I think we need to figure out how we can prevent this disease and how we can screen for it early on so we can find, identify it and detect it before it gets too late.